This video looks at developing a process FMEA using the seven-step approach of the AIG VDA FMEA Handbook First Edition. And we're going to be focusing on step two, structure analysis. The new handbook focuses a lot on the efficiency of the FMEA process. So obviously to develop an FMEA, management is going to have to commit to investment in people time and maybe investment in putting in relevant prevention and detection controls to address any outputs of the FMEA. But management will also want benefits. So hopefully if the team do good FMEA, it should result in the future in reduced customer complaints, reduced warranty concerns, and also a reduction in the cost of poor quality. So as a reminder, the seven step approach is broken into three distinct phases. System analysis, failure analysis and risk mitigation, and risk communication. Today we're focusing on step two, structure analysis. So to recap on the case study that we looked at in step one. So the organization have agreed a contract with GM. It's for an injected molded component with metal pins. It's to provide electrical connection between the customer application and this part. It's very similar to an existing product, but in this case, the team have decided that they're gonna be using a robot to place the pins into the tool before the part is injected molded. In step one of the seven step approach, we would have identified the project team, we would have established a draft scope, we would have identified a project plan, and we would have collected the relevant lessons learned data. And if we remember from step one, the team had already identified potential focus areas for the FMEA project. In this case, it was operation 50, which is setting up the tool and the robot, and step 60, which is injecting, molding the part. So the purpose of this step, structure analysis, is to identify and break down the manufacturing system into process items, process steps, and process work elements. The objectives are visualizing the scope, defining the process flow that we plan to use to make the product, defining the process steps and the sub-steps, understanding the 4M influence on the relevant focus process step, and this will provide an input to function analysis, which is step three. So in very simple terms, in step two, what are we doing? We're looking at the higher level manufacturing process. This is the complete process from the raw material coming in to the finished goods going out. Then what we're doing is focusing on a specific step within the process that we want to evaluate. Then what we need to do is to drill down into the work elements using 4M of that specific process step that we're going to evaluate. So what we would do is the team would brainstorm the proposed 4M condition for the particular process step that we're going to focus on. For example, Operation 60 injection molding. And in doing this, the team can look at similar products that are injected molded. What we might do here is get the shop floor input into understanding the 4M condition. This is a great opportunity to try and include operators in the activity of understanding the risk within a particular step of the manufacturing process. What we see here is an example of a 4M risk analysis. The first thing the team would do is to define the boundaries. Where are we going to start the 4M risk analysis and where we're going to finish. It's really clear that we do this before we go on to understanding the 4M that will affect the process. The next thing the team needs to do within this particular step is to define the proposed work sequence. 
Once that is done, we need to think about the bottom right hand box. This is what requirements at this process step are we trying to achieve? These requirements could be defined by the customer, they could be product requirements, or they could be things that the team have defined are relevant process requirements for this step in the manufacturing process. Then we can come up to think about the man-related risks for this step of the process. So for who's going to be involved and what are the risks related to those people. Then we can move across to the top left which is thinking about the machines and the materials that are needed for this step of the process and the associated risks. And in this part of the forum analysis, we can also include any influence of the environment. Coming down to the bottom left hand box, we can think about the documentation and the methods that we're going to need at this process step and the associated risks. My recommendation is this is not done in a computer, but we take this 4M format down to the shop floor to a similar manufacturing process and we collect this information, get an operator input and maybe also get an input from the supervisors. Now let's have a look at the second step structure analysis within the framework of the format to record the FMEA results. So in this case, we have three parts of the form to complete. We have the process item, we have the process step, and we have the process work element. So focusing on the case study, what would be the process item? This would be the finished injection molded component with the inserted pins. This is a saleable product in this case that we are going to supply to GM because within our factory, after the product is molded, we are not going to do any other assembly activity. The next box is the process step. So the team have decided here that the focus of the analysis for this part of the FMEA is going to be injection molding operation 60. The third part of filling out the form for step two is the process work element. So this is taking the work that we did in the 4M analysis and at a high level thinking about what is the material influence, what maybe is the influence from the environment, what is the influence from the machine, what is the influence from the man, and potentially what is the, uh, the influence of the method. So let's summarize step two. So the team now have a detailed understanding of the relevant process step that we're going to evaluate. They've done some activity to try and understand the 4M condition, and this may have been collected from another similar process if it's available. We've understood some of the potential 4M risks, and we've completed the FMEA template for step two. Now what we're going to do is move on to step three, function analysis.